In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this linen texture that repeats seamlessly in Procreate. Hi, if you don't know me, I'm Mel Armstrong, an illustrator and surface pattern designer from the coolest little capital in the world, Wellington, New Zealand. I created this channel to help other illustrators and pattern designers level up their skills and build a career from their art. So let's grab our iPad and let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is create a brush. So to do that, I am going to create a new document and I'm just going to create a 3000 by 3000 pixel square. And then if we just grab the 6B pencil, which is in the sketching brush library, and then all you want to do is it's at about, let me see, about 57% and just draw a straight line down. Let it snap. So don't take your pencil off. And then if you hold your finger down, tap it down, it will straighten it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit to each end just to taper it out. And now we're going to create our brush. So I'm just going to have three fingers to swipe down and select copy all, or you can go up to the actions, then to add and then copy canvas and then go into our brush library. I'm just going to go into my textures folder here, and then I'm going to click on the plus. You can put it anywhere you like. I just wanted to make sure it was in this brush library then we're going to go to shape edit import and then paste and then we want to invert it to do that we just need to two finger tap and then make sure you hit done and there you can see already it is creating this lovely texture which looks a little bit like a linen fabric texture but we're going to make a couple of adjustments first. So if I go to stroke path, I just want the jitter to be maybe about 100. And the spacing, I think it was pretty good there at 100 is at 20%. The next one is in the properties. I'm, guess I'm going to change the max size to about 170. The minimum size to about 10. And then if I go to the about, we can give this a name. I'm just going to call this linen. And you can put your name in as well. And then just click done. And then you can see it here in our brush library. So I'm going to turn that layer off and create another layer. And select a darkish grey. And then all we need to do is paint that on the entire canvas. Try and get it as even as possible all over the canvas. And then if we just rotate that around, we can then add it going the other direction and that will create that lovely texture that looks like a linen fabric. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. Now I'd like, at this stage I like to test it. So I'm just going to create another layer below the texture and paste in a color. So let's choose this pink one here. And then if we change the blending mode of the texture, so I'm going to change it to maybe an overlay or a soft light. And you can see now that beautiful texture look as is coming through quite nicely. Now, another thing here that if you were to put that on a pattern, it's not quite repeating yet. So to create a repeating pattern, there's a few things we need to do so that this repeats seamlessly. So I'm gonna turn off that background layer and just put the texture layer back to the blending mode back to normal so we can see it. We can duplicate that one and then I just want to move that across to the left. So make sure that snapping magnetics and snapping 
and the distance and velocity is all the way up. So make sure they're all on and then you can drag it across until it snaps and you should see two orange lines. And then do the same with the other to the other side. And then I'm going to merge those together. So I'm just going to merge down and now it's all one layer. I'm going to duplicate that. And now this time we're going to go up and down. So I'm going to start by going down and then for the second layer I will go up. And now this is a repeating tile. However, we do have these lines where you can see that it's um, cut in half and we need to fix those up. So first let's merge those two layers together. I'm then going to create another layer and then I'm going to select white and paste that in. So we've just got a plain white layer behind it and then I want to merge those two together. This just helps with the cloning tool to pick up the pieces that we're going to clone to try and camouflage these lines. Now I'm going to go to the adjustments and then select clone and then we want to select a brush I'm going to go to the airbrushing library and select the medium hard blend brush and then with your finger you can select a spot and then when you paint it will clone it. So just do this in a very subtle way until you can't really see that line anymore. Don't go too overboard with this though. You want to make sure that it all looks seamless. And I'm also just going to add a few of those cloned pieces out here just to blur it out a bit. Okay, so let's test that out now. If we turn on that background layer and then change the blending mode, Let's go to a soft light and that's looking pretty good and I might test this with a pattern so this is now a seamless repeat texture and if I put a pattern behind it it should also repeat now the pattern should be a 3000 by 3000 as well you want it to be the same size as the linen texture repeat so I'm just going to go and grab a pattern. So I'm going to go to the actions and insert photo and I've got this Christmas pattern here. So without the texture, this is what it looks like. And this is a 3000 by 3000 pixel pattern tile. And then I'm going to turn on the texture and just adjust the opacity. And let's just try it out with a different blending mode. So maybe the overlay. Sometimes I use multiply as well, but I think I'm going to stick with the overlay for this one. And then let's just zoom in and have a look and you can now see that beautiful linen texture that will repeat seamlessly with your pattern. So that is without it and then with the pattern. And if you like this pattern, you can actually purchase this on fabric, wallpaper and home decor in my Spoonflower shop and I will leave the link there for that one. The next thing you want to do is to export it. So go to the actions and then share and then you can export that as a JPEG or a PNG. I generally export as a JPEG so if I was uploading it to Spoonflower, that would be how I would do it and then add I can save it to my photos or I can airdrop it to my computer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it was helpful. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts, so please do share them in the discussion area below. If you're interested in knowing how to do this in Photoshop, I suggest having a look at this tutorial here. Until next time, see ya!